and let's get going. So for those of you who may be new to my world, my name is Susan Hyatt. I'm a master certified life coach um, and coach trainer. And I've been doing that for over 14 years. I am a published author. My latest book is called Bear and it's all about body positivity. I am the creator and founder of the University for Life Coach Training. I'm a TEDx speaker. I'm a wife and a mom. I'm obsessed with a lot of things, but mostly helping you get lucky. So um, this is just a little bit, oh my God, I'm laughing at the picture that, <laughs> look at this picture that Holly picked out, Mallory, of me and Scott. Okay, we got to change that. I'm all like, let's go girls. Um, this is the silver fox, uh, my 22-year-old son, Ryan, and my 20-year-old daughter, Cora. It was just a little bit about magazines that I've been in, um, the book, some show appearances. And, but what I really want you to do is, I know y'all are trying to multitask right now. The only thing I want y'all doing is taking notes. So shut down all your tabs and let's go. Um, I want to welcome our first guest, Angela Masonic. So Angela is a certified life coach and she's the host of the Stop Over Drinking and Start Living podcast. She specializes in helping women stop drinking, take a break from drinking or cut back. I am so excited about Angela because Angela, first of all, everybody loves Angela. She is a breath of fresh air and she is doing business her way. And look, she's got her magic necklace on. I do. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Beautiful. Did you change? Were you wearing that yellow blazer when you took a picture? I was not. So this is my Susan Hyatt. You know, I'm showing up in some bold colors. I got a green shirt on, yellow you blazer. Do. The outfit I had on earlier was my Target St. Patrick's Day outfit. Okay. Okay. So, so you gussied it up for the webinar today. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for being here. So here's what I want to know. Um, so I, you were part of, let me make sure I'm getting this right. You were part of summer of yes last summer. No, I did, um, finish strong. Finish strong, even better. So that yes. was, she was part of the finish strong two day event. Was it two days? Did we yeah. It was two days. days. It was all a blur. Um, the fourth quarter of 2020. But you did something during Finish Strong. What did you do? Well, it's so interesting because Lachelle Wooten, who is one of our guests today, was a panelist in Finish Strong. And yes. I did a lot of things in Finish Strong. You coached my face off. And I <laughs> changed how I sold my coaching program. Um, instead of not revealing my pricing and getting pe people on individual consultations, I decided to be upfront with my pricing. Um, and you recommended that like you get much more qualified buyers when they come in from that place. And like you're not, people don't feel pressured to buy from you on the phone and on the spot. So like those people may feel like, oh, they're not sure. But then if they buy, they may not be the best clients. Um, so I did that and then Lachelle, what she taught us to do is how to visualize our success and visualize the um, award that you would give yourself, the prize, the celebration that you would do when you accomplish your goals. And I implemented all of that um, mm -hmm. in quarter four of 2020 and just blew everything up. I mean, I have been doing this for a while, so it's not like I was starting from scratch, but. Um, right. it, but, those, but, but like, notice you're like, well, I was already like, yes, that visualization was amazing. If y'all mm -hmm. didn't attend finish strong, you're going to want to attend. We'll talk about it later, but Lachelle's teaching again for the ultimate coaching convention, but you, you, you did something that month. You had like your highest selling month, didn't you? Yes. So I did, um, I did my first challenge. Mm -hmm. for my work and I help women stop over drinking so I did a challenge and I called it the wine free work week challenge mm -hmm. and it just unloaded like I also decided I was gonna have fun again Susan like that was when I really introduced like fun into my work I'm like how can I be the fun stop over drinking coach like yep. talking about over drinking a lot can be 
a little dark, you know, because a lot of times we do things that we don't like when we over drink. Um, and people have a lot of shame and regret and guilt around that. So I'm like, how can we make this fun so that people feel inclined to keep going, right? Same thing that right. you teach us how to do in our business, like make it fun so you keep going after it. And I incorporate a lot of fun into that challenge. And it just, the floodgates opened. I revealed, it just had a much higher qualified buyer that came in. Um, I had a lot of fun doing that challenge. And since then I've done it two or this, I just finished my third time doing it. It's very successful. Yeah. And she's still being modest. You made like, <laughs> you made like, I don't know, like $80,000 in that month or hundred K what'd you do? Yeah. It was something yeah. So my goal for the Q4 was hundred K, which yeah. was already going to be like a big stretch, like a big stretch for me. And I made that in six weeks. I mean, she was messaging me from vacation. I yeah. remember. And you're like, Susan Hyatt. These are my favorite messages to get. Yeah. Um, Susan Hyatt, you're not going to believe it. I'm like, I freaking do believe it. Because hello. I was like, raise your rates yeah. <laughs> until a show gets a hold of your visualization. And yeah. then you did that challenge. Yeah. Um, now, here's the thing. I want, I want y'all to really hear some of the things that she did. So she increased her pricing. <clears throat> I didn't increase my pricing then. I didn't do that until January of this year. Okay. Oh, right. So I my original prices until the end of the year. Okay. Yeah. Then you increased your pricing. Mm -hmm. And what happened? They still kept coming. <laughs> <laughs> they still kept buying. I okay. know. Yeah. So, she, so Q4 was more, you tried something new, which was a yep. new challenge. Yep. You decided to have fun. Mm -hmm. That was a result of deciding to have fun. Yeah. Um, and the two, and also just like, I think too, like um, the consultation process, I changed that. Right. So it was like, you know, I was doing the same things, the same type of practice. It was like, you know, I had a freebie funnel, the podcast funnel, and then I would, you know, entice people, give them some value, entice people to come in and have a consultation with me. And then I would reveal what the, if the coaching would work for them or, you know, I would invite them in, tell them the price. And I had been doing that and I just, I just fell off with that mm -hmm. because it was, you know, a significant investment. And so you recommended to like, you have found that revealing that earlier. And then when people get on the phone, you're not overcoming all the objections about the price so much. It's more like question and answers and if it's a good fit and, you know, overcoming different objections, but they already know what their price is. So you're not like, side swiping them with that information that was big yeah i would love to hear in the chat um and make sure that when you're answering that you do it to all panelists and attendees but um as a consumer do you prefer to know the price or have to ask or find out the price on a consultation call because i really think it's like think about how you like to purchase mm -hmm. um i know there are different um, marketing uh, strategists who teach different techniques. We actually have tried it both ways. Mm -hmm. And the the way that I think is um, the way, work, what Angela's saying, like people, you're not trying to win people over on the, on the phone necessarily. I don't care how good of a salesperson you are. It feels yeah. better um, yeah. so that people aren't getting on the phone and then being well, like, I think too, oh. for me, like it's more comfortable because I know that I don't, like when I was doing the sales process before, it was like, it was always in the back of my head, like, and now I'm going to get through this thing, this process of how I'm selling, and then I'm going to tell them the price. So I was always kind of nervous about it, right? So like my energy that I had to tell them that at the end of the call was always just kind of like, uh, now I'm going to drop this thing on them. And then we right. have to overcome that, right? So like my energy was different too. My energy totally shifted when I, they knew the price. I knew they knew the price. Right. They're still going through an application process, but it wasn't like they're shocked on the phone with me. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And and in a, 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 the energy is so important. Marilyn mm -hmm. said, yes, yes, yes. So, OK, so you had fun. You did a new challenge. Y'all know I love a mini challenge. Um, it was Susan's but, challenge for challenges or what was it? It was. Um, you did a challenge on challenges. Right I did. That start. sounds exactly like me. That does sound like something I would do. I'm pretty sure I did do that. Yeah. Um, but it's it's basically 
a, a way to organize your intellectual property into bite-sized pieces and have fun mm -hmm. with it and give away prizes and all those things. Yeah. And I love the sound of a wine-free work week. Now, not everybody likes the sound of that. I personally like the sound of it because as a perimenopausal woman, um, I happen to know that I operate and function so much better um, alcohol-free. Yeah. And there are many, many reasons why a woman might want to have a wine-free work week. And I love that you made it fun. So yeah. why did you become a coach? Well, I became a coach because I life coaching changed my life. So I was struggling with alcohol and food um, for my entire adult life. And I had tried every diet program, shake, smoothie, bullshit that has existed. <laughs> And I finally found life coaching and I learned about my brain and about feelings and how to manage feelings. That. I know feelings, right? This magical thing out there. Um, and it just changed everything for me. And I'm like, I'm pretty average, like American, you know, like nothing like crazy, wild, special about me. Right. I would disagree. I, I could do a whole listen, webinar. Listen, I think that I've made, I do think I'm amazing now, but like then I was just like, whatever. I was a mom. I had a job. You know, I had like the American dream, right? There wasn't anything like super compelling, you know? And I wasn't hard on myself, I promise. But like, no, I get what you're saying. You're I was like, just like, I Americans. struggled. And I'm like, if I struggle like this, I know that there's so many other women that struggle that just are trying to do the thing, right? And it changed everything for me. And I'm like, I want to help people do that. I want to help people experience the other side of that battle. And so I decided to become a life coach. And it's been amazing. And what is your favorite thing about being a life coach that no one told you? Ooh. Hmm. I really think it's just helping people live in their miracles, like helping people accomplish their goals and like seeing them go through the process themselves and then overcoming that on the other side and them sharing that with you. Like it's, it's, it fuels me, you know, cause I just know what that before and after is like so hard. Um, and the freedom I that I get to experience. What'd you say? Was the last the freedom part? that I get to experience yeah. in my own life. Not nobody's telling me what to do. Nobody's telling me what schedule I have to keep, even though I keep a pretty standard schedule. Like, as but if no I one told you. You nobody it. told me. It's my choice. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I do think that that is something that's incredible about being a life coach is is the the honor of witnessing that transformation and then also being able to do that on your own schedule that you created, how much you're getting paid, and the hours and all those things. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm loving your feeling lucky uh, sign on the wall. So in, in, in the realm of feeling lucky, what do you think is the number one tool, trick, hack that creates your luck? Mm -hmm. Managing my mind. Mm -hmm. Doing a daily practice of journaling, thinking intentional thoughts, uh, having an expansive, I know I'm listing more than one, but number one, manage my mind. But I think when you manage your mind, the feelings part comes into that, right? So, um, telling myself what I want to think, visualizing my success and having a practice of doing that every single day. And not getting attacked by chickens. That's right. Not getting attacked by chickens. <laughs> she has really taking care of myself. Like really like self-care is a big, is a big thing for me. And what do you is the biggest part because that is that is one of my I think secret sauces to success and luck is self-care what's something that you do every day that you're like yeah I take exquisite care of myself I get plenty of sleep I go to bed early and I wake up early um I drink that's water. right take your asses to bed I drink my water what about um, buying I, one of those jugs it really does help yeah. I think I need a custom one though that says like all kinds of my crazy sayings sure. on it. Yeah. <laughs> like drink your fucking water. Um so hydration mm -hmm. and sleep. Mm -hmm. I will I will absolutely attest to that. I actually am thinking about getting a sleep certification just because I'm always saying take your ass to bed and get your ass up. Yeah, and <laughs> I think it might and be good to have some science. 
Exercise, uh, sleep, water, eating good, that kind of stuff. Like, I feel like that's self-care for me now. As before, I used to think of it as, like, something I had to do. And now I think about it as something I want to do so that I can preserve my energy and, like, be as successful as possible. And it just feels like a part of my day-to-day now. Hmm. Well, you are magic. You're far from average uh, today. Um, If you're not just the average all-American woman today, what are you? Hmm. I feel like I'm a total badass. (laughs) Yes. Who would agree? Um, Who agrees that Angela is a badass? Um, And also, where can they uh, best hang out with you? Well, I have an amazing podcast. It's called Stop Over Drinking and Start Living. Every week I produce a new episode. There's 116 episodes you can binge on. Um, that's fun. And then my Facebook page, Instagram. I'm like an Instagram these days. I do a lot of free classes and things. I'm doing one tomorrow. It's called It's Not About the Alcohol. It's um, not about the alcohol. It's not about the alcohol. alcohol. Yeah, yeah. Well, all the places, um, Angela, we are so delighted that you could be featured on this panel. You are an amazing woman. You are definitely an example, an example of getting lucky on purpose. Yes. I I just want to add one thing. You've got to be willing to fail. Like you have to be willing to keep trying those things. So like when I was talking before about this past October, and being willing to try not to, to put my prices out there. I had no idea if that would work. You suggested that, right? But my willingness, and I felt like I wanted to vomit when I did that, right? Like, I was scared shitless. I am not like, I have all of the feelings that you all might be having, starting out, doing all the things, trying it. But my willingness to do new things when I feel stuck or things aren't working out is, and then learning from that is how I feel like I've been successful in a short amount of time um, and being really good at being uncomfortable through it all. (laughs) That's all. I co-sign all of that. You have to be, I'm, I experiment all the time. I have no idea if certain things are going to work out, but I just keep trying. Mm -hmm. So that is an amazing tip. Thank you so much, Angela. You're welcome. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. All right. Wasn't she amazing? We need like snaps for Angela. All right. Next up, we have Sunday Schneider Bean. It's like 930 where she is in South Africa right now. So Sunday hosts the Expat Happy Hour podcast. She's a master certified coach. She helps people who live abroad navigate the challenges of being an expat. Um, how to find work, how to learn the new language, how to manage homesickness and cultural differences. She also is a badass. Welcome, Sunday Schneider. (laughs) Good evening from South Africa. So Sunday, true or false, you were on a coaching call and people literally stole the copper lines off your house. (laughs) So I don't know if it was on a call or between sessions, but my I was living in West Africa in Burkina Faso in a city called Ouagadougou, and they did take the copper from the line. So I usually have a plan A and a plan B and a plan C when I'm working abroad. And I didn't anticipate the copper being stolen, so I had to fa- find plan D, and it worked out. <laughs> so... <laughs> Listen, I love this example from Sunday because so she had the copper line stolen off her damn house and she had like a go bag ready, like a backpack ready if there was terrorist attacks or civil unrest or the mm-hmm. shit hit the fan. She had mm-hmm. a bag literally ready to go. And and listen, we're all you know over here in the US complaining about, you know, we got too much snow today or whatever, fill in the blank. Like she is such a great example of resilience and perseverance and resilience and all those things. And so Sunday, how many years have you been a coach now? Um, I became a coach in 2008, so 12 years. Okay. And so yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's 13 years, isn't it? Or it depends on when. 13. Oh yeah, it's 2021. (laughs) 
I'm like, yeah, 13 years. It, yeah, okay. around to 13 years. 13 years. And why did you become a coach? Um, I honestly became a coach in the beginning, really pragmatically, um, because I was a, a consultant and a trainer. So I, my master's degree is in intercultural communication. So I was teaching people about crossing cultures and transition. And I was working with C-level leaders and high-level people. And I just realized that we needed, I needed different methodology with adults because I knew instinctually that it would be better if they found their own answers. And I had um, been exposed to coaching when I was working for Accenture. It was then called the Anderson Consulting, and they were teaching managers how to use coaching in the corporate context. Mm -hmm. And because I have a qualitative communication background, it felt really natural for me to be asking those questions. And my mentor from way back when, from the nineties, she said, Sunday, I think you'd be a really good fit for coaching. You should think about it. And I decided to do it from like a very pragmatic thing. But what you probably don't know, Susan, is that I, um, I got certified in coaching. I became an ICF coach and then I did Martha Beck coaching and I didn't do Martha Beck coaching until she's in slow-mo I just signed up for back coaching. I went through an absolute pain. Am I too, is my internet too slow? Should I shift to my phone? Tell me if my, if my so internet's You were bad. like robot slow-mo, but it seems like you're back. Okay. So tell me again and I'll switch. I'll switch my, I've got plan B with me. Okay. Um, and then the day before I decided to sign up, I went into panic because I knew, I knew I would have to call myself on my own bullshit. I knew that it would make me have to do the work on myself. Um, and I was so grateful that I did that training because it helped me show up in much deeper ways for myself. So I can do that for my clients. Awesome. I did not know that little story. And we're so glad that you did call yourself on your stuff and do uh, get yourself mm -hmm. certified in multiple ways. And so what do you think helps you what do you think is like your lucky charm for being successful in business? Because you're very successful um, in a variety of ways and in the ways that you show up and in new projects you're working on. But what, what do you attribute that to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think for me um, is consistency. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, when I started my podcast, I decided it would be a weekly podcast and that was 220 weeks ago. And I haven't missed a podcast. I know what I was writing then and, and have, you know, followed me till then. So I think it's constantly showing up. And um, the thing about consistency, it's not about boring consistency. It's actually about creativity. Mm -hmm. Because my belief is that once you create that one thing, right, you've moved it out and then the new thing will come up. So because I'm constantly creating things, I'm constantly generating new knowledge or new perspective or, or new insight for my, for my people. And it's not that I show up every week. It's that I show up every week with something new, something fresh. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't do that if I didn't commit to that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, that is what has helped at least me be successful because everybody knows with coaching, it's a really high trust you and my people are all over the planet. So I'm also crossing cultures. You know, not everybody is happy to have an American coach. They want someone who speaks French or someone more serious. And it takes time to build that trust. So I think that um, consistency has really helped me because they constantly get to know who I am and how I'm thinking. This isn't always what's there. They once I show up over and over, they start to see more depth and layers that they wouldn't if I was only showing up once a month or every quarter type of thing. 
Yeah, I totally would co-sign consistency. And I like the way that you frame that because I do think sometimes that's one of my biggest pieces of advice for entrepreneurs, particularly coach entrepreneurs, is that um, being consistent and being the one that people can count on that's going to show up when you say you're going to show up with whatever it is, a blog post, a Mm -hmm. podcast episode, a YouTube show, um, creates a sense of safety and confidence in you that you will be there. And, but I like the way you talk about it, that it's not just the consistency of showing up, it's that you are always in a creative mode, which creates an energy about you and your work that is fresh. Um, Mm -hmm. As Cody Rigsby on Peloton would say, fresh Mm -hmm. and flirty. Um, In the business, in a business way, in the best business way possible, Sunday's (laughs) fresh and flirty. Um, (laughs) and so Sunday, um, what would you say is the best way you have attracted clients? Um, so I, I think it's from my podcast. Um, one metaphor that came to me years ago was the wolf. And that I knew I needed to howl and then my pack would come. (laughs) So I think my podcast is the best way. And I, um, I really try to show up, um, you know, with full on content and, and learnings. Um, are you howling, Susan? I think my feed is delayed and I caught you howling. (laughs) Yes. Yes. All right. (laughs) <laughs> you were like frozen in a howl. It was nice. Um, and I think what I had to trust is, and this is, you know, people who didn't know me seven years ago, I, I was a lot more guarded. I was a lot more protected from the professional perspective because I came from corporate Mm-hmm. And it has been a journey of me seeing professional, but also allowing myself to drop my guard and show people more of who I am. And because of that, the podcast was an reality show more of my vulnerabilities, um, but also share more of uh, my journey and the journey I bring my clients with. So it was a very, it was a very personal way um, for my group to, to find out whether they resonated or not. Mm-hmm. That was a question that came in from Heather, <clears throat> Heather Lopter. She was saying, um, you know, is your, have you found that your podcast is the best way? And it sounds like the answer to that is yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I am not honestly like I could I know I could do better with with sales funnels and with all the very technical aspects of business building. But um, because this my a lot of the work I do is around transformation, people finding purpose and meaning. It's a very deep work. And um, I know that if they hear a podcast and they hear themselves in the podcast, or I interview someone and their story resonates with their own lived experience, that is going to be so much more effective than if I have some high tech, you know, sales funnel. And I know I could do more for my business by investing in in those things as well, Mm -hmm. but I really try to um, lead with the content um, so that people can see themselves in the transformation. So good. So good. So what would you say Sunday is something that I know that you practice a lot of self-care techniques. Um, what would you attribute success Mm -hmm. in your business to that has been created through self-care? Um, Well, first, I just want to be really transparent. That was not always the case. I used to be really crap at taking care of myself. (laughs) Um, And that was a process that took me a while to master. Um, Now, I think the shift has gone from these are things I should do to this is my job to do. And it's 
taking care of myself as part of my role as a professional, as a coach. Um, and it's integrated into my everyday. So one of the biggest shifts is I take a break from 1030 till 12 noon and I go for a run, shower, I eat, I'll maybe message a friend and then I'll start again with fresh energy at noon. Um, recently I've started doing more cross training. I might do yoga one day. I might do boxing another day. I might do high intensity training because I know my body needs more than just one thing. Um, so that's probably been the biggest thing, like without, um, negotiation 10 30 to noon, I am, I am taking care of my body. And it's actually, I, I talk about it like an attention diet. If I don't take that break, um, I have sloppy attention in the afternoon. So for me to, my, my energy is my asset, right? So for my, for me to bring the best energy to my business and the best attention, I have to do that work. So that's, that's been a really, really important shift in my, in my life. I, you know, I agree with this wholeheartedly because the bear methodology is also what I teach for business. Um, and for me, I mean, even like every other Thursday is a filming day for us. And my go time TV crew comes over hair and makeup. And, um, last Thursday was literally the first time in years that I overslept and they were at my door. Hair and makeup was at my door at 6 AM and I was still asleep and Scott woke up and starts flipping on lights. And I was so disoriented. And I was like, what are you doing? And he was like, what are you doing? The doorbell's ringing. Andrea's here to do your hair. And so I like jump out of bed. I can't believe it. She thought I was dead. Instead of me just being late, she thought I was actually dead. <laughs> like, but anyway, talk about consistency. But my point is I didn't get my workout in that morning. And everybody was like, oh, because they know the energetic difference in working mm -hmm. with me if I've had my workout that morning mm -hmm. and if I haven't. And on a filming day, if I haven't had my mm -hmm. workout, they know that by two o'clock, I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, we're done. You're, let's go home. Like y'all, I'm done. <laughs> I can't say another word. I can't say another word. Yeah. So I totally understand what you're saying that as a coach, our ability to pay attention, bring the energy, make connections, mm -hmm. help people is so reliant on what we do for ourselves. So I love that about you. And I used to be crap at it too. You know that mm -hmm. too. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Sunday, <laughs> um, how can people hang out with you and find out more about you? Amy Long's well, they can check out my podcast, Expat Happy Hour. And I have um, my website, sundaybean.com. That is a name that I cried over in kindergarten, but now I'm over it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's my real name. And, um, and I have a Facebook group called Expats on Purpose for anyone living in international life. So they're welcome to join that as well. Absolutely. And you're going to want to subscribe to that podcast because she has some amazing new projects coming up that I'm not allowed to talk about yet, but they good. <laughs> oh, <can't wait. laughs> Thank you, Sunday. I go back and enjoy your vacation and, or go to bed. It's like almost 10 <laughs> o'clock your time now. Uh, thank, you, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Snaps for Sunday. Wasn't she? She's just such good energy and so amazing. Um, so now we have Lachelle Wooten. So I'm so excited about Lachelle. Lachelle is a powerhouse, a force. She is a life coach. She is a social worker. She's a lecturer at Columbia University's Graduate School of Social Work. Um, she has a master's in social work from NYU. And um, it is my pleasure to have her on the faculty and be able to have her impact our students all the time. So, Michelle, welcome. Hello. So, were you so proud hearing Angela's testimonial about the visioning you did for Finish Strong? 
Yes, I had chills. I mean, I know, I know how it works. I know how it works. So I felt good to hear somebody say it worked. I know everybody's like, love you, Michelle, because, (laughs) um, and you're a fan favorite in my world because why do you think, why do you think you're so good at creating your own luck? Um, well, I really, a long while back when I gave up people pleasing, um, I just allow myself to bring whatever it is I have to give in the moment that I show up. And because I allow that for myself, I'm generally in a pretty positive mood because I don't have any real constrictions on myself. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm showing up happy to just be who I am, the people around me tend to like gravitate to that. Mm -hmm. Um, And it feels good to them too. Mm -hmm. And I think that really is one of the threads around like creating my luck for myself. It's it's really like showing up, right? Just as who I am, which doesn't, you know, if I gave adjectives to all the things that I am, not all of them are adjectives that the world would be like, that's amazing, but it's me. You know what I mean? So- Give me an um, example. I am selfish. Mm. (laughs) And people don't often think that's amazing. It's amazing for me. Uh, because, you know, I get to do what I want to do and it feels great doing what I want to do. I think that's what we're all here for. And so, you know, but I find that, you know, there was a time when I used to try to hide that, Mm -hmm. right? And I tried to be more selfless than I actually felt like being. And it was a pain in the ass for me and exhausting. And so I was showing up as a pain in the ass and exhausted. Mm -hmm. And so people were like, eh, you know, we'll take her or leave her. But then when I was like, okay, you know what? This is just me. I'm happy. I'm bubbly. I'm selfish. I don't share my French fries, like whatever it is, people were into it. And so I think that creates a lot of luck for me. Well, and I think like when people say, oh, she's so full of herself. It's like, we should be full of self. A hundred (laughs) percent. Full of self. And, and, um, I don't share my French fries either. I'm like, I don't share penis or French fries. Sorry, not sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Amen. (laughs) You never know what's going to come out of my mouth. (laughs) But so Lachelle. Yeah. Edna's like, I don't share my dessert. Um, Ice cream. Don't, don't even look my way. I'm like, literally get your own. Like why? And I'll help you get your own. Yes. But See, that's not none selfish. of mine. That's not selfish. Um, so why did you become a life coach? Because you were initially a social worker, correct? Exactly. Yep. So I became a social worker like 20 something, 22, 23, some 20 some odd years ago. And I was working like traditional social work, right? I was counseling and I was working at different organizations and I actually loved what I did. But I discovered that in the field of social work, there was sort of this push for you to really work with your clients very, very therapeutically. And my personal style is definitely more coaching. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I had to put food on the table. So I continued in the field, like on the traditional track. But as I started to really allow myself to accept who I was, And what I loved about how I wanted to spend my time, even in work, I realized that coaching is really what I do Mm -hmm. uh, naturally. And so I allowed myself to start transitioning into just being a coach and not taking on like therapeutic uh, coach uh, clients. Mm -hmm. And what do you, where do you get most of your clients? Like, what do you think has been the most successful way for you to attract the kinds of clients you want to work with? Yeah, I, you know, most of my clients, <laughs> I my mother says this all the time, my money's in my mouth. Every time I open my mouth, that's where clients come from, right? So if I do a workshop, sit on a panel, talk in a group of friends, I I end up having clients that come from that, right? right. And again, it, it, it leads, it, it's me being just authentically who I am. And then people wanting more of that, right? And really using it in a structured way in my coaching practice to help them get somewhere. But that's really it. I mean, I get people from, when I do lives or videos on any social media platform, I get clients from that. I have a podcast, which I started last year. I'm getting clients from that. So it's really just me letting people know who I am just by talking about, you know, whatever the soup of the day is. And that's what it does. That's, that's really the primary way I get clients. 
What's the soup of the day today? The soup of the day for me today is really about teaching mm -hmm. and how, because I taught this morning in the yeah. university yeah. Um, and we're teaching here by just sharing who we are and what our journey is. And so, but I also like when I taught in the university today, mm -hmm. I learned too, right? It's, it's being connected to other humans is always like being in a classroom. Right. of humanity. And so that's the soup of the day for me today. I'm actually going to re record a podcast when we're done about teaching today, um, because just showing up as who you are really gives us an opportunity to learn whoever's in your presence. So yeah, that's my soup of the day. Yes, on learning, Sunday says. Um, do you have a recent example of how you turned a setback into an opportunity? Oh, 2020. <laughs> right who well, the whole year <laughs> the whole year of 2020 definitely um you know so i am i live in new york city uh and most almost everything i did was in person all my workshops were in person most of my coaching was in person um i had consultation work that i did in new york city and then 2020 happened um and then also for my family i realized like my my small close knit family which is about 8 of us I realized as the weeks rolled in uh, with the pandemic starting in March last year, uh, my family was coming undone in yeah. New York City. So I was like, we gotta go. So I took them all uh, to a relative's farm in North Carolina uh, and we stayed there for six months. And so there was- I, I was know that? Yes, I was there for six months. We went the end of March, we came back September. And um, it was the best thing I could have done. But I will tell you, when I was making this decision for the whole family, I realized I'm like, everything that I do to make money is in New York City. And I'm packing up the car and I'm leaving. Um, and so I did. But what it did for me is, one, it gave me the opportunity to recognize my value. Because a lot of what I did in New York City, the people who were utilizing my services, were happy to utilize my services no matter where I was. So right. that was a boost. But also it opened up this whole new level of creativity for me mm -hmm. um, because that time away from like the life I was accustomed to helped me to realize that I don't actually want to be in front of people all the time, mm -hmm. which I was, right? Mm -hmm. And so I started saying, well, but I still want to give what I have. So how do I do that? And so I started to develop products, which I'm working on, right. um, and a masterclass, which allowed me to serve people, bigger groups of people than the way that I was. So it really, it that setback of being pulled away from everything I was accustomed to in my business helped me to really open up new levels of business for myself. I think that that's such a great story and a great lesson. And there's so many, there's so many, I mean, it, within our own company, our entire um, 2020 plan mm -hmm. was live events, um, in-person events. And so we, you know, we had to do the, the same kind of thing. And I think that it, I think getting lucky on purpose mm -hmm. um, and being able to make money as a life coach involves the ability to use the tools that we have with mindset, yeah, right? Yeah. right? And like, that's what you did. You're like, okay, well, yeah. I'm packing up this car and we're getting the hell out of here. Right. And I'm Which gonna- Which was self-care first, yes. right? We talked about that, right? You talked about that with Sunday and with Angela. It was self-care first. First, I got to take care of myself. Then I will figure out the rest. And it was really a great move. I need pictures of this farm living. I need- I will send them to you. <laughs> It was fabulous. There were chickens. I had eggs out, fresh out the chicken every morning. Dogs and turtles and a lake it was phenomenal, which is why I'm moving back to North Carolina this summer. You are? I am. What part of North Carolina? <laughs> I'm moving to the Raleigh-Durham area. Okay, okay. Yep. Uh, I know, I'm gone, we're out of here. Listen, Elberry Franco's safe. here and she's in North yeah. Carolina. Y'all definitely. Listen, and I'm taking that whole family of eight sisters, nieces, in law. We're all going. The whole eight pack. The whole eight pack. My mother, everybody's going. The eight pack of New Yorkers. Yep. Born We're and bred New going. Yorkers. Born and bred. All right. I mean, let me tell you how rooted I am. 
the where I am sitting right now, which is in my apartment in the Bronx, I have been living in this building since I was five years old. I can't with you. I can't. So, <laughs> so th this was my mother. Like I grew up in Savannah, Georgia, uh -huh. and my mom built a house next door mm -hmm. to her parents, and her brother built a house behind. And so the whole family lived on the same block in Savannah, yeah. Georgia. She lived there from zero to God. How old was she? Fifty something years old when she before she left. finally left. Yeah. Yeah. Divorced my father and got the hell out of there. Yes, but she that's another story. <laughs> uh, but wow, since you were five yeah. years old, this since is I the biggest five. adventure ever. Biggest adventure of my life. And I am super, super excited. This is excited. a show. You need a TV deal. Listen, it's so much going on. Like I'm really revamping my entire life. I'm I'm in real estate school right now. I'm already thinking about opening a wellness center when I get there. There's a lot going on. We're gonna have to talk because you know yeah. one of my projects coming is called Women Invested about women oh, yes. invested in real estate. So let's talk. Oh, it's going to it's going down. Okay. <laughs> well, so Lachelle, yes. the, that was obviously amazing and a breath of fresh air. So where yep. can everybody, first of all, she's a teacher in the faculty. You need more of her. Also, oh God, I'll be so talking good. about next, the um, ultimate coaching convention where she will be presenting. Yeah. Um, yep. But how can people hang out with you even if they don't come to my things? Absolutely. Well, everything you need to, my first and last name is my everything. It's my website, LachelleWooten.com, all my social media. My podcast is called Abandoned Ordinary, and it's on every streaming podcast platform you can think of. Um, my masterclass is on my website. My products that I'm developing for you will be on my website. So just type in Lachelle Wooten and you can connect with me in any way you'd like. Well, thank you so much for your time. I know you're busy. My pleasure. Uh, My you probably pleasure. need to pack for the farm, <laughs> um, but I, I will see you. I will see you in April for sure. Yes, for sure. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Lachelle. Snaps for Lachelle. Bye, so good. Everybody. So good. Um, okay, so I would love to invite you all, whether you're watching this Inside Rich Coach Club on Facebook or you're here on Zoom with me, type in your questions. Mallory is collecting questions and will ask before, I'm gonna have plenty of time for questions here, so no rush. But before we get to questions, I wanna talk about what I teased you about a few times, the ultimate coaching convention. So back in the day, like 2008, I coordinated um, 2008 and then 2009. I coordinated some live coaching conventions. You know, remember when we could like breathe on one another? And um, hopefully, I am getting vaccinated tomorrow. Vaccination number one. I'm so excited. But we'll be able to be in person again, but we can't right now. So I thought I would throw a two day event for coaches or people who are interested in coaching. Um, April 8th and 9th. So Thursday, April 8th and Friday, April 9th. Please join us if you are somebody who loves personal development and transformation or you're a coach of some sort. Oh, it's like auto doing it. Ugh, I'm literally <laughs> the worst at this sometimes. Here are some of our keynote speakers. We have the amazing, if you know who these people are, light up the chat and let me know you're excited. The amazing Pam Slim, she um, is one of my long time coaching mentors and buddies. She has a new book coming out. She is freaking off the hook amazing. We have the illuminating, illustrious Rachel Rogers, um, who has a book coming out called We Should All Be Millionaires. And there's me, who's that girl? Um, we have a variety of panelists from a variety of coaching schools and backgrounds. Cara Lowenthal, Renee Washington, Amy Lada. You just met Sunday and Lachelle. They will be there. Um, we also will be having breakout workshop presentations. So Alexandra Franzen is going to teach you how to write a book. Hillary Weiss is going to teach you how a, a really cool alternative to doing webinars called Hot Seat Beast. Um, we have my trademark attorney, Takora Davis, coming on board, and many, many more. We're going to be announcing speakers a little at a time, 
and we will be training you and offering trainings on things like how to have your dream coaching practice. Um, we're going to have a panel on diversity, equity, and inclusion in the coaching industry, the latest in social media marketing, podcasting. Um, Corinne Motokaitis has not yet been added to our slides, but she um, has had a radio show and a podcast called How She Really Does It for years and years and years. Um, and she's just agreed to come on board for that. How to make serious money as a coach. We're going to have an open house for the university and training tour, how to write a book, how to get press, how to be the best coach ever. So we're going to have some advanced training for coaches. Um, so it's a place where you can get an infusion of fresh ideas, become the best coach you want to be. Um, and that's whether or not you're doing this full time or as a side business, or if you're somebody who's really interested in becoming a coach, this is for you. Also, we have a VIP level. So I'm going to get to pricing here in a second because we have a regular ticket and we have a VIP ticket. I have my, if you can see it, the lighting, my making moves mug right here I've been drinking out of. But we have a deluxe package for people who want to have brunch with me on top of all that other goodness that you get. So you're going to get a mug, um, my favorite tea from Fortnum and Mason, my personal chef is making homemade scones, y'all. So if this delivery gets tied up at your postal service, <laughs> I cannot help it if those scones are stale. But we're going to do our best. The mug, the tea, scones, little mini jams. Um, I even picked out special custom cloth napkins for you. And I am shipping, whether it's full alcohol or mock tails, a bottle of champagne, because I have, we need to add her to these slides. I have um, an amazing woman. Um, she's called Wine Caroline, who is going to talk about decolonizing the wine industry, but we have champagne from a Native American winery that you're going to get. It's pretty good. Also with the deluxe package, there's an addition, you get brunch with me, you get that box shipped to you, and then you also get a um, training on how to wow your audience on camera with Chrissy Ball, who also is a trainer for the University for Life Coach Training. And she just happens to be a Hollywood stunt double who's worked um, on Wonder Woman, X-Men, The Dark Knight. I mean, come on, come on. So if you register for the ultimate coaching convention, by Monday night. So today, what is today? Wednesday. So between now and Monday, get your cheeks in the seat and get your ticket because we have um, a workbook that we include with our in-demand training that I'm going to have to do a video flipping through this thing. I think it's on my to-do list, but it includes everything, including our million dollar sales consult script, a step-by-step -step on how to run one of those mini challenges, like Angela said, made her so much money, communication plans. I mean, this workbook is actually worth more than the ticket to the whole conference. So hello. So here's how you register. Visit this URL, shyatt.com. Oh no, I've blocked it for myself forward slash UCC 2021. And I know that Mallory is probably lighting up that chat with the details, but um, when you click on get your ticket now in the top right corner, then you can pick whether or not you want classic for $197, are you kidding me? Or deluxe for $497. So the deluxe is where you get brunch with me, the brunch box, the extra training with Chrissy Ball. Um, and then when you click on whichever package you want, whether it's classic or deluxe, you can fill in your billing and your payment info. And then you have to click this orange button that says, I'm in. And then we'll see you there, Boo Berry. Um, so, I want to hear, I want to know like, what was the most comforting thing you heard or the biggest takeaway that you got from either Angela, Sunday, or Lachelle? And then what questions do you have about joining us for the ultimate 
coaching convention. And you can also let us know in the chat if you are already signed up. Um, yes, Michelle Barry Franco says, oh, I love that you have mocktails. So right, you, you'll you be able to tell us, we're gonna send out a questionnaire, like do you want um, gluten-free scones? Do you want regular scones? Do you want regular champagne or um, alcohol-free? We like to service the people. Yes, I am publishing prices ahead of time. It's either $197 or $497. Get in bar. Um, so, oh, Karen was saying that's what she liked. One thing that she learned. Kathy says, um, she's quoting Lachelle, when I'm, when I'm showing up happy to just be who I am, people gravitate to that. Amen. Um, so every time I open my mouth, I get clients. <laughs> yes. Uh, so Laurie asks, any other tips on boosting energy in addition to sleep and water? So I have a ton of tips on boosting energy. So you definitely, mindset, mindset is a big way. If you're constantly wearing yourself out with negative thoughts, low quality thoughts, that's definitely going to drain your energy. Um, you also want to be thinking about what are the things, like part of it is being an investigative reporter for, for a few days in your life and pay attention to things that irritate you, enrage you, exhaust you, like pay, because there are energy leaks happening everywhere. Um, people crossing your boundaries. Um, you know, email, social media feeds, all those things. So I would recommend doing an audit of what's coming at you through all your senses, through screens, um, the kind of music you're listening to, the kind of shows you're watching, um, the kind of conversations you're entertaining and tolerating. And then you can start taking your energy and your power back and creating boundaries around those things. So you may be like, huh, every time I let my coworker spend her lunch time at my cubicle, chomping down on her burrito while she shit talks everybody, like I feel gross later, right? I want you to really pay attention to all of those things coming at all of your senses because it affects your energy so greatly. And listen, I can tell you something that is the biggest energy leak of all is not going for what you want. <clears throat> um, if you got the early bird ticket, do you get the workbook? Yes. Um, Lachelle says, agree on the audit. Yes, energy audit. Um, Althea says, when Sunday said, not boring consistency, it's about creativity. And once you move it out, new stuff comes up. That was so good. That was a big takeaway I had too, Althea. Um, Kathy had another suggestion for increasing energy play, generally goofing off, having fun just for the sake of having fun. Yes. Um, Helen says, I'm full. Oh, the full of self. Be full of self one. Juliana says, my toddler does not understand, understand boundaries. She is my 30, what, she's your what? 34 and a bit feral. I love that. Third. Yeah, I mean, that's where you have to like delegate childcare. Like you establish the boundary by not being the only one doing it all the time. But I get that. My 22 year old is a bit feral. Um, let me see, Mallory, what other questions are you, that was just to me, Mallory, not to everybody. What other questions do you, have you noticed whether in the Facebook group or here that I might have missed? So I, I don't believe it was on the slide. I don't remember seeing it, but we've had a lot of people ask for the general times of day that they should plan for the workshops. Oh, good point. Um, nine to five, both days. We may wrap a little earlier than five, but if you block off that time, you'll be safe. Working nine to five. And then 
it's on Zoom. Will there be um, a way to like pick and choose what they're they're attending? Will there be more than one happening at one time, or what can they expect in terms of the experience? Sure. So I just saw L. Um, I think it was Ellen was asking about time zone. That's central time zone, nine to five central. Um, and yes, so when we have the full schedule created and sent out, we you will be able to pick which workshops you want to attend when. Um, there may be some overlap, but um, I think we'll be pretty good where most anything that you would want to attend, um, you won't necessarily have to pick and choose, but. And then um, did we have the date for your? Oh, we didn't have it on there. It's um, April 24th, isn't it? I believe it's a Friday. Let me look real quick. April, Friday, April 23rd. 23rd. And I believe it's from like 11 to 1. one. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's the deluxe option. And then we are still working with Chrissy Ball, just so everybody knows on getting her one hour booked. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, what can people expect? Like what, one thing we keep saying is like, it's not just your standard Zoom meeting. What, what makes this stand out as fun? Well, everything I do is not typically like your corporate stuffy regular Zoom thing anyway. Um, but we have entertainment planned throughout. We have breaks. We, ha we have things that cover self-care, things that cover fun, things that it's like I'm going to be throwing glitter at you throughout each day, metaphorically. Um, and we have literally some of the most entertaining presenters that exist. Some of the smartest and most entertaining and delightful humans coming together to train you in one place. Um, and there will be like fun contests happening and ways that it is just not your typical boring old Zoom thing. Did I leave anything out, Mallory? One question we've gotten kind of across the board here real quick is, um, will there be recordings for the yes. things that they can't attend the whole time? I always record everything all the time. The only time something isn't recorded is if there's a freaking mistake, which has happened because of me. But <laughs> we will have a whole crew. Also, also, I haven't said this part, which is we just ordered all this equipment so that Brandon, who is my full-time videographer, um, that we, we will have sets and we will be able to stream when I'm talking from fun locations. Thank you, Angela. Thank you for your time. Um, so, yay, Kathy. I'm so glad you're coming. Yeah, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be so good. Thank you, Helen. We've got some enrollments already coming in. Yay, enrollment! Well, I mean, it's really, I mean, I wish we could be in person. And next year, the ultimate coaching convention will be in person. Um, but we will um, also, because we've purchased this new equipment, we'll be able to sell virtual tickets next year as well, in person and virtual. And that, by the way, is what we're doing for Finish Strong, that I am going to do live and in person in October in Chicago. Um, but if you want a virtual ticket, we will now have the technology to um, effectively do that, which we're very excited about. One more thing before we go. Um... Oh my goodness, what was I going to ask you? I know I was going to ask you something important and I totally just let it slip. Well. I hate when that happens. I hate when that happens too and it happens to me all the time. I'm like, why did you into this room? I know what it was because it's really important because it's called the ultimate coaching convention. But if somebody's not a coach, would they find things they could learn about there? A hundred percent. So if you're into personal development, if you're somebody who's considering being a coach, this is an amazing place to be. So back when I would organize 
the coach conventions, there were um, civilians, as we would call them, who would attend, who were just interested in learning about coaching themselves and all those kinds of things. So I think it's definitely, you know, if you're somebody who wants to write a book, if you're somebody who wants to start a podcast, but you're not a coach, you know, there's a lot available training wise, whether you're an actual certified life coach or not. And we welcome you. All right. Anything else, Miss Mallory, before I go smack some people around on Instagram? <laughs> We're good. Okay, awesome. All right, Sherry Bradfield says, thanks to all the speakers, amazing advice. I would love for you to give us a shout out on social media and let us know um, what you think about this. I would love for you to join us for the Ultimate Coaching Convention. If you or someone you know is interested in becoming a life coach, we are enrolling for the next round for the University for Life Coach Training. I think it's the best training on the planet. So I hope everybody, I want to give a shout out to Angela Lachelle Sunday. Thank you all so much. And I will see y'all on the flip side. Bye.